Hello folks, welcome to the channel where I talk about web, node, and developer productivity related tools. In continuation to the last episode, I'll keep on going with the HTML forms. Today I want to give you an idea of what is the minimalistic HTML and JavaScript you need to handle any form submission. I'm just going to take a sample text input and a text uh, checkbox as an input. And I'm going to show you how you can create a JSON out of it and pass it down to your uh, any API. Or if you don't want to pass it down as a JSON, what does it do and how can you do that? So that's what the target here is. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Here I have a, a form that has uh, a text area, a checkbox, uh, and a button. Okay, so let me create a script tag uh, under which I'll create a function called as handle form submit. Right, and I'll simply do a console.log thing. Okay, just for the sake of convenience, I'll just simply log something here so that we are absolutely sure that this is getting called. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll simply add a event handler. This is this is called as an event handler on submit of the form, and I'll give this a handler called as form handle form submit, and that's it. Uh, I have it already running on my local on local three thousand. So if I go, and if I go here, uh, yeah. So if I open this, you can see that it's actually. Uh, rendering the thing let's try clicking on save and we notice that oh it's not rendering the console log right why, why is that happening that's happening because the type is button and the if, uh, for this event to happen the type should be submit right so what i can do is i can change the type to submit uh, it should get re-rendered i should now click on save and it works right the other alternative is to simply get rid of this because the default type is submit. So you need this. Uh, it should work the way we want it to, right? So the console log is basically getting logged here. Cool. So now, now see. Let's see how how can we get the data, right? So let's try to pass in the event object that uh, the JavaScript engine creates for each event. And we will catch it here as a event as a parameter name. So what I'll now do is I'll uh, simply try to do console dot um, event. Right? We'll we'll simply see what what does this event mean and what does it contain, right? So let's again try to submit. Right, it, it shows that the name of the event type is submit event. Uh, if I open it, wow, why is this not opening? Wow, this is something problematic here. Yeah, maybe because I need to do event dot event default. I'll, I'll get to this why we need to do this. Right. So if you see the target is nothing but this form, right? So that's what we are interested in, right? Okay, now coming back to why do we need to do event dot prevent default is suppose I don't have this. Now you'll notice that uh, as I told you in the last uh, episode as well, if I click on this, it basically tries to redirect to the uh, action path. And if there is no action path, it simply tries to append the question mark and the rest of the parameters here. What's happening exactly is it's it's actually actually trying to redirect and reload the whole page again. And that's the reason this event object is no while no more uh, in the in the memory or no more in the uh, in the uh, JavaScript engine's context. That's the reason we are not able to inspect it. But as soon as I do this. We are telling that don't 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 you refresh it. 
uh, I'll handle the uh, submission totally on my end. And then this stays in the browser's context. And that's the reason how uh, we are able to inspect this. Okay, so coming back to this, what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave this as it is. Now, uh, what I'll do is uh, there is something called as form data built in into browsers. So what we should do is we should create something called as const form data is equal to new form data to which I'll pass event dot target which is nothing but our form right now what does this do is basically it it goes through each of the form element uh, or form input except the submit button obviously so it will go in text area it will go to this checkbox it will try to pick its value and create an object out of it and put its uh, put every value into the form data uh, object uh, now, how do we access those values, right? So we can simply do for uh, let value comma key of form data. You can simply say console.log value. Let me put this value. In. we should be doing actually key column value okay. now uh, you will see that it, it it will it won't work but I'll, I'll tell you why it is not working right okay so let's go refresh click on save it prints nothing right why is that even happening let's try to see if the function is getting called right so i'll go to in function right and so if you on this you'll notice that it's actually going inside the function but it's not printing anything any of the value why is that happening is because uh, that's how the inherently html forms and javascript interact in internally you always need to have a name attribute on each form input. So here I'll maybe say it as text. Here I'll say it uh, maybe name as check. Right. Now, if I come back here, I type something here. I check this checkbox and I hit submit. Now you will see, right? The value is this and the text is this. So yeah, it's actually key comma value. And I, but yeah, so you don't need to remember the syntax. It's actually that I, I don't remember even after so many years of experience. So that doesn't matter actually. So now if you see here, text has the value of this, check has the value of on. That's what we wanted, right? How can we convert this to JSON? We can simply create a object here let me say let uh, form input data is equal to i'll create this what i'll now do here is i'll simply say form input data of key is equal to value right and if value equals 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 say it's on it's in to true because that's what json understands and that's how you want to store the data into your database right so i'll simply say true right uh, and that should do the stuff for us uh, what i'll now do here is i'll simply say control dot log form input data and let's see what happens with this. I'll input some some name here. I'll check this checkbox. I'll click on save. I got the exact thing I wanted, right? This you can pass it to your uh, uh, API or anywhere. What you need to simply do is simply do JSON dot stringify of form input data, and that should do the job. 
Okay, so I mean, let's try with some name. I'll do this. Save. You got JSON. You can pass it to anywhere. You can store it into your local storage. You can pass it to your API. You can do whatever you want with this data. And this is the minimalistic form and JavaScript that I would highly recommend you to do. Why? Because there are multiple reasons uh, why I prefer this particular way. One is you are letting browser take care of everything and you are not handling each and every uh, key press or whatever it is, right? If you are going to handle the key press, you are basically uh, taking the whole load onto your code and that is eventually going to hamper the performance because browser's native code is obviously give you will give you a lot of good performance. Uh, and it really depends on how you want to handle the form validations, which is upcoming thing in this series. Uh, but most of the time, uh, there are multiple cases that you want to handle the form submission when user clicks on submit button or when user tabs out of that uh, input box or when user tries to uh, type. Uh, so as user types, you want to validate it at, at the same moment. So there are multiple strategies that you can use. But to start with, uh, as a beginner, I would highly recommend you going with this way because this will save a lot of uh, effort and it will help you understand what's happening behind the scene. Uh, so kudos to that. Uh, I highly appreciate whatever is the browser built-in APIs and I highly recommend leveraging those API rather than being uh, or creating your own uh, custom logic to create a JSON out of your form data. That's all I had as part of this series. Uh, see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.